Welcome everyone to the Zyto Wellness Webinar, where you can get valuable wellness information from a variety of holistic health experts every month. Whether you're a wellness professional or just want to learn more about holistic health, make sure to register and join us for future webinars. And we hope you find this presentation helpful. We're excited to have Betty O'Neill join us today to discuss how we can supercharge our immune systems with nutrition. Betty has been a nutritional therapist since 2009. She specializes in gut and hormonal health, and she runs programs for sugar elimination and cold and flu. Through helping others, as well as through her own personal health challenges, Betty has realized the powerful effect that food can have on our health. Betty, thanks for joining us. We're looking forward to hearing what you have to say about boosting our immune systems with nutrition. But before we get into that, we would love to have you share a little bit about yourself and how you got into this field. Hi, Tori. Thanks for having me. Um, so I suppose I started getting into health and nutrition back in 2005 when I actually started having some health issues myself. Um, and I suppose every practitioner has their own story, but my story, I suppose, started with having more IBS symptoms. Um, and I went to my local GP and I presented my symptoms to him and he said to me, oh, you're fine. You know, you don't really need to, um, you know, you don't have anything wrong. We did an allergy test. There was nothing wrong again. And then I was kind of confused as I left. I thought, hmm, I'm still having these symptoms, but yet I'm, he's saying there's nothing wrong with me. So I started to dig a bit deeper and uh, I came across a naturopath where I was living at the time and I went to her and she explained absolutely everything that I was feeling, I was experiencing and she gave me um, a treatment plan to work with and it absolutely helped me. So that was when I first got into um, health and nutrition. I was, I was hooked there and then. Great. Research helps everything. Um, what do you have to share with us today? So today I'm going to be talking about supercharging your immune system with nutrition. So as we know, nutrition is so important um, for our immune system. So we're going to be delving into all of that. Sounds fantastic. We'd love to hear your presentation. Okay, great. So I, today I'm going to talk about um, our immune system. So one of the things is all about our immune system, what exactly it is and how does it protect us? So we have three sections, okay? And um, we have the innate, we have an adaptive, and we have the passive, okay? So this is like, you know, your innate immune system is what we're born with. It's basically every type of um, immunity. And it's what we have when we're, when we're born. And then we have more an adaptive, okay? So an adaptive is what we, um, is what we kind of develop. It's more active as we go on in our lives. Um, we can get we can get immunized with that as well, and then we have a passive, which is borrowed from another source, and it can be from our mother, say, with breast milk. Okay, mm. so then the different parts of the immune system um, we have we have the tonsils. Okay, so it's this little diagram here. We have this little um, person, and we have some tonsils. Okay, and they're at the both sides of our throat, and they help us to fight infection. And then we have our adenoids, which are on the soft kind of tissue um, behind our nasal cavity. And then we have our nymph nodes and they are carried, they carry nutrients um, and waste material um, blood tissue and bloodstream. And then we have our lymph nodes, which are vessels and they are all out throughout our body as well. Right. We also have the um, thalamus gland which is um, it helps us to kind of guard against any kind of deadly pathogens or bacterial or fungal or yeast. Um, and the next one we have is our uh, um, appendix. Um, and a lot of people actually get their appendix removed. Um, and we thought that it didn't have any um, immune function at all. But now we know that it does. Um, it actually peaks in, in our second or third decade. So we know that the um, appendix is really, really important as well. We also have the bone marrow, um, which produces our cells. We have red blood cells, we have platelets, and we have white blood cells. And they develop as well as we get older and they don't live very long. So they kind of, you know, recycle quite fast, but they keep us really healthy as well and they protect our immune system. 
The interesting one is the next one, which is our pears patches, and they are found in our intestine in the ileum region of the large intestine, but they contain this magic microbiome. OK, and we're going to talk lots about, more about the microbiome because it's really, really important, the microbiome. Um, and it, again, protects us against um, the bad guys, the bad pathogens and stuff like that. We also have the spleen, which is the last one, and this kind of has a double act. It acts as a filter um, for our immune system, um, and it also helps to store blood cells there as well. So that's really, really important to mm. our, our spleen. Mm -hmm. So then we have the invaders, um, and I think this time of year, we all know that there are invaders, and there's been one invader that's been around with COVID-19, um, and that, of course, is a virus, a virus. But we also have bacteria um, like H. pylori, which is found in our stomach. We have streptococcus and the mycoplasma as well. Um, we also have some fungal as well, like our ringworm, our candida albicans, which people are really familiar with. Um, and we also have athlete's foot as well. Mm. Parasites as well, tapeworm, flatworm and hookworms as well. I think we all remember at some stage even being given a kind of a worm dose from our parents. Um, and that's that's would be the parasites in that category as well. And then we come on to our virus um, and there are influenzas, Epstein-Barr, the cold sores and of course COVID-19. And I don't know about you guys, but like since COVID has come um, onto our doorstep in over a year, we need our immune system to be more resilient and as kind of active as ever. So it's so, so important to have um, a robust immune system. And um, that's really, really important. Absolutely. So then we have, yeah. So you, you guys probably have had COVID kind of over there as well. Right, yeah, it's, it's a pandemic, it's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like in, in over here, we've had like our third lockdown. We've had three lockdowns in the last year. We've had like one at the start going on for a couple of months and then last winter and then this January, which is kind of, you know, and we really need that immune system to be really, really um, strong. But then on the other side, there are food and lifestyles that can have a really devastating um, impact on our immune system. And they can come into categories of food and lifestyle, as I said. So the first thing would be the processed foods. Mm. Now, the processed foods can come from any category. They can be like artificial sweeteners. They can be preservatives. They can be salty foods. They can be fried foods or they could be fast foods. So the minute we eat these foods, our body, you know, it takes us a long time to digest them and to kind of, you know, figure out what they are and, you know, then acknowledge that we need to get rid of them. And um, so it puts our body under pressure. It suppresses our immune system as well. So that's really important to avoid like our processed foods. Like I, I try and tell people to have the 90-20 rule where you can have, you know, 90% of the time a clean diet. And then if you have 10% of the time, you know, a little bit of, you know, kind of takeaway food or whatever, it's, it's okay, you know. And then we have caffeine. Now, I don't know about you guys as well, but caffeine has actually become increasingly um, popular over here in Ireland because we were big tea drinkers. We drank tea by the bucket load. It was quite a lot. But but since I think the last five years, our caffeine intake has been so, so, um, so um, increased. Like I'd say we're having, you know, three or four cups of caffeine. But then it's not just the caffeine on its own. It's like the um, syrups and the sweeteners and the sugar put into the caffeine as well. So that's really, really important um, to watch the caffeine levels. Um, and, and look, at a, a cup of coffee is OK, but it's just the overconsumption of, of caffeine, mm. because also what caffeine does, it actually um, increases our cortisol level, our stress hormone. Um, and when we go into too much of a stress kind of mode, it dampens down our immune system as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. So because when we drink the caffeine, it spikes that adrenaline and cortisol. Rust, so it's like that that increased um, kind of like that yo-yo effect and then drops it back down. And that's when when your immune system is starting to suppress. So what people are interpreting as extra energy is actually just a, a shot of, of cortisol. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And then on the other hand, you have the scenario of people that would drink too much coffee and they can't sleep 
And, you know, mm-hmm. sleep is so important because we're going to talk about it in a minute. Sleep is so important. So it is a big cycle of overconsumption of caffeine and then not being able to sleep at nighttime. And that has a devastating effect on your immune system as well. Mm-hmm. So then we come on to sugar. Um, and sugar is, again, another food that has been increased in the last kind of five, 10 years. We know that 70% of the food we're eating has and comes from processed food um, and has sugar added some way. Like we have our processed food on one side and we have the um, biscuit buns and cakes on the other side. And then on the other side, then again, we have like our, um, you know, artificial sweeteners and sugars and all that category. So there's a lot of different areas um, you know, that sugar can be added into our food. Um, and, you know, as a European country, we are on trend to be one of the most obese countries in the world. And it can be from the and is from the, the sugar that we're eating as well. So sugar weakens our immune system by at least 30 percent. So I don't know if you ever noticed kids even going to parties um, and they just feel wrecked after it, their mood is dipped. That actually depletes their immune system as well. So it makes them more vulnerable to getting some colds and coughs and flus as well. So um, again, like I said, it, it, it weakens our immune system and it impacts our white blood cells as well. So we need to watch the, the sugar content in our foods. And then we have the smoking. Um, and again, vaping has become a lot more popular over here and alcohol as well. So with smoking and vaping and any kind of alcohol, they are a chemical, they are like, you know, um, a toxin and our body again has to deal with them and they really deplete our immune system as well and our ability and they impact our microbiome as well, that good bacteria in the gut. Mm. So that's really important um, to monitor that um, in your lifestyle as well. And then we come to the lifestyle part and we have such a thing, there is such a thing as actually over-exercising. So we all know that exercise is so good for us and um, it really does impact and have a positive impact on our health. But then we have some cases where over exercising becomes a bad um, kind of lifestyle choice on on your immune system. So it's the intensity of the workout and it's the length of the workout. Um, and as well as that, we have these natural killer cells that are produced when we exercise. But it does take a long time for those to be kind of replenished in our body. Um, and we need about like three hours and 72 hours. So if you think of someone that's going to exercise every single day, then that's going to impact their their um, ability to recover as well. So we need to have the recovery process there. It's going to be really important. Would you recommend rest days um, like spread out during the week or just at least one rest day? Do you know, is there a guideline on that? I would think there would need to be a rest day in between each exercise day. I think that's really advisable mm. for people. But then elite athletes, you know, that are, you know, training for, for competitions, maybe they don't have that, but I definitely think a rest day is so, so important. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we have stress. Um, stress is the big one as well. So with stress, it can manifest at least 80% of your health issues and, and more importantly, our immune system. OK, so um, when we're stressed, again, we increase our cortisol level and we increase our adrenaline and that can downregulate our body as well. Mm-hmm. So stress is really, really important. Um, and like we, we want to have a little bit of the cortisol in our body, because if we see, God forbid, a lion or a tiger coming after us, we need to pump out that cortisol into the bloodstream and get away from whatever is attacking us. But then our body doesn't know the difference between the psychological stress, which is kind of, you know, us worrying about an email or an interview or a driving test or something like that. It doesn't know the difference. So it'll still send out that cortisol. But what you want to do is be able to turn it off. And when we can't turn that off, um, it starts to impact our immune system as well. And then, of course, it's going stress and caffeine are going to impact our sleep. 
So sleep is one of the probably the un kind of, you know, recognized um, and, and is really, really important with our immune system. So we would need to have at least seven to nine hours of restful, restorative sleep. We need to be able to fall asleep at nighttime. We need to be able to stay asleep all night and we need to be feeling refreshed after our sleep. Mm-hmm. And if we don't do that, then there's something going on. I often hear from my clients that, you know, um, oh, I still get nine hours, but I'm still feeling wrecked, you know, and that's the stress and it's the poor quality of sleep. So there's definitely something going on. And of course, their immune system is not going to be repaired at all. So sleep is so important um, and we need to be able to manage the caffeine level. We need to be able to manage our stress levels so that we do fall asleep um, and stay asleep and feel refreshed after it as well. Okay, um, so then we move on to the good news. So that was the bear of the bad news. So now we have the good news. So what exactly and what are the foods that will help to boost our immune system? Now, this list could have been so long um, and even the next section for the herbs could have been so long. But these are probably my favorite ones that I've kind of, you know, um, always have in my cupboard. And I always advise my clients to um, take these as well. So top of the list is vitamin C. Okay, so we know that it reduces the length of the cold and also the severity of it. Okay, Mm -hmm. so that's really, really important. So adding in some tangerines or limes or green leafy vegetables or bell peppers, broccoli um, watercress or kiwis, those type of foods will increase your vitamin C level. Now, there is a myth that people, you know, have that when they drink like a freshly squeezed orange juice or sorry, even the carton orange juice, that they will get some vitamin C. But in fact, that the carton orange juice won't have any vitamin C. But also, if you get your orange and you squeeze it, you will have vitamin C, but it will only last for about 20 minutes. Oh, so you need to actually drink your vitamin C, your orange juice really fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So people don't realize that when I when I say it to me, I said, if you're going to squeeze your orange, you know, you need to be drinking it straight away to get your vitamin C. Yeah. Does that mean uh, does the vitamin C only last for 20 minutes or is it the um, like in your body or is it from the drink? It's only. Yeah, it's the content of the vitamin C in, in the glass of um, oh, okay. freshly squeezed orange juice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then we have zinc and that helps to to fight off invading bacteria and virus as well. And it also helps to make DNA and proteins as well and all the genetic material in all of the cells. So even having a little fistful of pumpkin seeds, shellfish, eggs, green leafy vegetables, and they will help to increase your um, zinc levels as well. Mm. And sometimes you can actually see um, in the health food shops or stores, you can get like a vitamin C and zinc uh, lozenger, which is really good for throat infections. It actually helps to soothe that kind of irritated, you know, um, fiery throat that people would experience. So when you're looking for a throat lozenge, look for one with zinc and vitamin C? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. It, it's always good to have a little stock of them in the in the house, I think, for kids even, you know, because when they come home and they're like, oh, my throat is sore, you know, and here, have a lozenger. Perfect. So, yeah. OK, so ginger, we're on to next. And that is anti-nausea, anti-inflammatory. And we know that the ginger root is really got high antibacterial properties. It has antifungal and it has antiviral. And I always say that fresh is best because when you have some ginger in the house, it's so nice to make a really refreshing um ginger uh, drink and Mm. you know it's great to add to foods as well any soups or stews or casseroles or anything like that you can even add it into a smoothie as well actually it tastes really really good and you're really boosting your immune system then as well and you're giving it a good chance to to fight off any any pathogens there as well and then we have garlic i mean everybody knows garlic and again that is antimicrobial and it's antiviral and it's antifungal as well So again, I would always, always use ginger and garlic for the base of any curry or any stew or any casserole. And it just gives off such a vibrant taste. And as well as that, you're going to kill off those um, bacterial fungal yeast that are there present. 
Um, and you can actually grate it into foods or you can chop it. You can actually store it in your freezer. Um, either or um, it, it's going to be really, really good. But definitely having garlic in the house is, is good too. Do you specifically only recommend like um, the fresh vegetables or do you recommend oils and, and aromatherapy with those as well? Um, you can use either or. I prefer to use, as a nutrition therapist, I prefer to use the fresh and the ground. Um, but I mean, you can, of course, if you have a suitable oil, you can use them definitely. Um, great. Yeah. And then we have our Manuka honey and I have slash local honey there as well because honey in itself has antimicrobial properties and it helps to help and fight uh, bacteria and viruses as well. So Manuka honey itself will have the MUF factor. It's like the Manuka unique factor and also local honey will have really good healthy antimicrobial properties as well. But I always stress to people to make sure that you do have local honey because some of the ones on the supermarket, they will be just like um, a liquid, you know, um, syrup and it's it's not really great at all. So you're really, really better off getting a local honey. If you know anybody that has some beehives down the back of their house and they're producing honey, it's always good to, to use that. Mm. And you can also, um, you know, take a little teaspoon of honey if you have any kind of throat infections. It's it's really, really nice as well. Yeah. Great. So then we have our vitamin D um, and vitamin D was actually recommended by our government um, probably at the start of this year in connection to COVID-19. And they recommended that we take it um, about a thousand IUs of vitamin D. And everybody knows that Ireland is probably one of the rainiest countries. And the way we get our vitamin D is from our sunshine. Mm -hmm. So we need to have the sun shining on our skin to make vitamin D. So it's really, really important, I say, to get your levels checked. Um, you can get it from certain foods, but not in the right amounts. Like it mm -hmm. will be fortified with your milks and you know some eggs and some oils like that, but we really don't get enough. Um, and if you are going to supplement your vitamin D, it needs to be in a fat base as well because it is a fat soluble vitamin. So I'd always recommend people to go outside and to get some vitamin D from the natural sunlight uh, in between the hours of 10 and 2 for about five minutes. Now, this really depends on your skin type and you have to be careful with sun protection as well and cancers. Mm -hmm. So if you have like the Irish people here, if they have really, really fair skin, they might only be able to tolerate three minutes, pop yeah. out for the three minutes and then pop back in and pop on your sun cream. And if you can take a little bit longer, then stay out for five minutes, but then come back in and apply your sunscreen, which is going to be really important for um, protection so against against does, cancer and stuff. Uh, does sunscreen block the vitamin D? Yeah, it okay. does. So you've got to come out raw, raw skin. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you can imagine that like, you know, with the sunshine here in Ireland, a lot of people are deficient in vitamin D. OK, so then we come to our probiotics and these are probably one of the most important type of um, supplements that anybody could take. So we know that our microbiome is found in our gut, but it also is found in lots of different places in our skin, in our nose, in our eyes. Mm. But as I said, it mostly lives in our large intestine and we need to feed that gut with the good pre and probiotic type bacteria. So our bacteria can be actually killed off by having antibiotics. And you look, we need to take antibiotics if we have and need to. But again, antibiotics will be against, so it will kill. And prebiotics will be for, so they will give life. So it replaces the life. So we have pre and probiotics, okay? So mm -hmm. the prebiotics are actually the food that we can eat to feed the microbiome. So they will be things like our sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, um, and kombucha. They're the, probably the most common ones. And then we have the probiotics, which people know that they come in a capsule. Mm -hmm. And also people would think that they'll come in the yogurt drinks as well. But when we think of the yogurt drinks, there's probably a little bit of sugar and not a lot of the, the probiotics in it as well. So supplementing with a good probiotic is going to be really, really good to feed that microbiome. And there needs to be lots of different strains and species of the bacteria in the capsule, and they need to be able to withstand and kind of survive the acid and kind of travel down to the large intestine to do their job. 
Mm-hmm. So I can never stress that like having probiotics are, are so, so important and um, they're only starting to tip the iceberg with the research they're doing with probiotics. And it's not just for immune health and um, it's for, you know, mood, it's for um, hormone health and, um, you know, mostly the, the immunity. It's so, so important. Definitely. So then we have herbs. And again, like I said at the start of the other slide, there are, are so many herbs that you can put into your um, you know, diet that will help to kind of boost your immune system and help to fight off any colds and flus. There are elderberries and their echinacea. And funny enough, the two of them are kind of like those deep purple um type of flower and berry. Um, and they have kind of really good um chemical compounds called anthocyanins. And they have an immunostimulant effect as well. So they can be antiseptic, they can be antiviral, they can be anti-cancerous, and they can be detoxifying. And these little berries actually um, are found on the uh, roads over here. I don't know if you can find them in America, but they actually grow on the roads here. Do, do you guys have elderberries? Uh, I've seen elderberries in the supermarket, but I know they don't grow here where we are. Yeah. yeah. So they actually they actually grow in the ditch here and you can take them off the tree and you can make your own um like a tonic and you just boil them in a big pot and put some herbs into them like some cinnamon um some uh, star aniseed and some honey and you can make a tonic actually that will last right throughout the winter and that will help with with colds and flus and and really kind of boost your immune system as well. Um, And they both of those can be found in like capsule or tincture or um, tablet form. You know, they're Mm -hmm. both found in either or and you can supplement um, as you need to. Some people take them as a preventative or some people take them just when they get that cold or flu. Okay, great. And then finally, then I have just two little remedies, um, which is really, really good for the immune system. The one first one is honey lemon and you put in two to three chops garlic cloves three to four slices of fresh ginger, some raw local honey and some water, and then squeeze in some two to three, about three, two to three lemons. Mm. And you just pop it in with some boiling water and you make a lovely little hot lemon drink for, for um, your immunity. The other one then is three to four slices of fresh ginger, um, one chopped garlic and then cayenne pepper. Um, and you can put it into your ordinary kind of regular tea and then put in some taste, you taste it with some honey then as well. Um, And again, they're really nice, soothing um, herbal drinks to have at the end of the day if you do feel like a cold or flu coming along. And they're okay for kids as well. um, And they can kind of, you know, it helps their throat and make them feel better as well, you know, to boost their immune system. And they sound delicious. They are very tasty. They are very tasty, especially the honey in it. It really makes them tasty. Great. So there I conclude. That is my presentation. Thank you, Betty. Thank you so much. That was so interesting. It's so great to hear all of that. Um, I just have one question for you. What does an initial consultation with you look like? And how do you incorporate Zyto technology in your process? So I have a Zyto technology in my practice for the last two years, and I have created my own um, scans. So I get my, my clients to fill out my questionnaire, which is um, a very kind of long in-depth questionnaire. And mm-hmm. I, when I'm in clinic, then I run three scans. I run the food scan, I run the vitamin mineral scan, and I also run the wellness scan. And the wellness scan will check for gastrointestine, hormonal endocrine, the immune system and detoxification. So all of that information, I'm gathering so much from the client, from the scans, and then I create a plan for them and that advises them on the right foods and the right supplements and the right lifestyle choices. Perfect. Thank you. That's so interesting. Thank you so much. Um, what are some of the most common issues that you that people come to you with? Digestive and hormonal are mostly the common ones that I would see. Mm. Um, but then I'm kind of like, I don't turn away anybody because I just love helping people. And um, <laughs> like I said at the start, I know what it likes to feel really poorly from, you know, health issues. So I try and help everybody, but mostly it's hormonal and um, digestive issues. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Betty, for talking with us. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you too. Thanks again, Betty, for sharing that information about immunity with us today. Obviously, this has been a hot topic in the last year, so it's good to hear an expert's perspective on how the immune system works and how we can help our immune systems thrive. So thank you. If you want to reach out to Betty, her email is on the screen. 
or you can visit her website at bettyonealnutrition.com. Before we end this webinar, we wanted to share a couple of new resources that have been created along with the new 5.0 software update. The first one is the new BioSurvey video. This video is now live in the software and will play during the Compass 5 and Balance BioSurveys, as well as in the primary automated BioSurveys in the Select and Elite. You can also watch and share this video by visiting the Zyto Technology YouTube channel. The videos are available on YouTube, not only in English, but also the other languages that Balance is available in, which are Spanish, Portuguese, Romanian, Simplified Chinese, German, and Indonesian. And speaking of new languages, we have also updated the Balance user guides in all those languages, and have updated the Compass 5 manual in Spanish and English as well. And then we have also updated Select, Elite, and Evox user guides in English, so we encourage you to check out those resources as well as our training videos if you haven't already. You can find these resources by visiting training.zido.com. Another thing we wanted to briefly mention with the software update is that a new feature has been added that allows you to email reports directly from the software. This is a feature that many clients have been asking for so they don't have to worry about integrating their email with the software. So, if you select this option, the email will come from the Zido system as a no reply email. But if customers do reply to that email, it will go to the email that is on file for your Zido account. We hope you find this new feature as well as other Zido software updates useful. Our next webinar is next month on July 7th, 10 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. So make sure to register for that at zido.com forward slash webinars. Thanks again for joining us today, and we hope to see you next time.